Hello viewers, I'm SB and welcome back to Patrick's Parabox, where I figured it out, I, I figured this out, I was right on the edge, I had like figured out the important piece, but then I just hadn't fully integrated it into my understanding of what we needed to do to finish the puzzle. And frankly, I'm blaming, the, I, you know, I was just out of puzzle power for the day. That happens. There's only there's only so much productive thinking you can do in a day. So, here is what I did just now that totally worked. See, the fact that the green blocks will not consume a thing of a different scale is, in fact, the critically important piece of information here. We need all those things that we learned about what order things get, get eaten in and whatnot. I had figured it all out, I just hadn't put it all together. And the even better news is that doing that, figuring that out, uh, helped me figure this one out because it's actually quite similar. So we had already figured this bit where I need to do this with the meta puzzle block in order to retrieve the yellow block. And then once we have the yellow block, we can put it up here and do the same thing. Well, after another step or two, another intermediary step or two, we can do the same thing uh, with this green box. So we push this out here. We had actually, we had done like every step leading up to the solution. We just hadn't put it all together. Now see, this is a little bit different. This is really interesting because you could expect in this situation that when we press down, the yellow block outside of the puzzle will enter that bottom space and in doing so, push the yellow block that's already inside the puzzle up into the green space. Um, so this is a thing that we really did need to, need to see happen. We just have to remember that the interactions try to happen at the furthest point away from where I'm at, the furthest point down the push, essentially, in situations like that. And then it's easy enough to just climb in here, and there we go. That's another whole world. So, let's step into the next one. Reference. That's an interesting name for a group of puzzles. Huh. Okay, so, wait, how is this going to work? Because this is going to be weird, right? I mean, the only block we can put in here is the puzzle itself. But is that going to cause a... <laughs> okay, I see. And then we're going to have to climb out over here. No, I guess that's fine. Like, it, it doesn't need to be the case that each space contains... What I have been calling a meta space is just... It's not a different kind of space. It's just a space that used to... That, that contained itself. It's fine if it doesn't actually directly contain itself anymore. As long as it contains itself on, on some level. That's very fun. Okay, so... We need to get this in a position where we can push it downward from above. And then this is just showing us that we can do this, right? Because we know this solution. We've already done this puzzle. Wait, no, no, sorry. We have to, we have to climb out of this layer of the puzzle into that layer here so that we can, yeah, there we go. This is fun. I, I like this. Uh, so here I need to push that teal bit down. Teal? Is it this greenish blue? I Listen, I don't know the names of colors. Wait, how do we do this, though? If I push this into this space... That's, yeah, that's not actually helpful. Because, like, this, the other ones were recursive because they were spaces that contained, they were spaces that had entrances. Well, I guess this space is mostly entrances. My brain. Okay. Um. Ha 
how am I gonna... Because we need to enter the top right area of this level, right? So that we can push the... the I'm gonna say green, <laughs> for lack of knowing what color that is. So we can push the green one down from above. But how are we going to use what we have here to do that? Oh, well, what am I talking about? We can do this and then, okay, okay, okay. For some reason, I was thinking if I pressed up in this space, I would enter the green space instead of pushing the green space, but it's a space that is a block. So what we want to do is push it up here, then climb out the top of this puzzle so that we can climb out the side of this area so that we can do this. And then we just unrecurse them. I mean, it's still a recursive space. It's just, it's differently recursive. It is one recursive instead of two recursive. Um, okay, so this feels pretty similar. Right, we're gonna have to get this in here. trying to figure out like what is what is the part of this that's oh I see the part of this that's complicated is that I have to push this to a specific spot to be able to get back out of it and it's not so much that it's difficult it just takes a little bit of for for planning not exactly my strong suit but whatever we're getting through it Okay, so we have a blockless space here that we must put this inside of so that we can move it to the side so that we can get above it so that we can move it down. Yeah. I do have to remember to extract this though. There we go. And now a more complicated version of that same thing. I don't know. It's actually doesn't seem that much more complicated. Wait, how does this? So it needs to be this greenish space that's here, right? So that we can <clears throat> so that we can enter it and then move through it and come out of it to the left. But how are we going to do that? I'm kind of curious about this. If I move, this will take me outside of the scale that we're in right now, right? It'll push the block upward. Yeah, okay. I don't think we'd actually had a chance before to do that where we try to move from a space that is in one scale to a different space that is in the same scale. And I could have seen it just letting us walk across. But it does not work that way. So... I don't know why there is a third block here. This would be pretty straightforward if there was another block. We could stack things up in this corner. Um, actually, no, we would need even more blocks than that. We'd need, we would need two other blocks. Um, but I need to... Well, so the, the trick has got to be putting this in here, right? Ooh, this is a pretty this is a pretty tightly constrained play, space though. Okay, so hold on, I need to do this without pressing that up against the wall in a way that's unrecoverable. So this yellow box gives us the ability to do that, and then there we go. There it is. I mean, it's the same. It's the same idea. It should not still be striking me as like a new thought. But you know, put the thing inside the thing to get into the thing. 
So, obviously that's a problem. Um, how are we going to... Oh, I hate that these are multiply nested. Um... Wait, 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 wait. Huh. This is a problem. How does this work? Because I can't, like, I can't move the thing. And I need to enter this one. But this won't solve the problem, right? Because there is a, yeah, there is a box unsatisfied on some scale of the puzzle. It's interesting that one of them starts in the, um... Oh, I see. The point of that is to show us that we can solve this in the other direction. So hold on. We need, we need this to be the top layer. Okay, so we're gonna, we're gonna come back up to this color. So we go down until we're here. We start locking these in place and then going upward toward the exit instead of downward toward the exit because space is omnidirectional, obviously. Who wouldn't know that? Pushing this, there's no way to push this greenish box down outside of the bluish box, right? We can't get in behind it. And I can do this, which would allow me to push the, actually, so yeah, the answer is we can do this. And then now we can move out to the left of here. We've placed ourselves in this space. We can push this down, and then that doesn't solve all my problems. Um, it's worth noting that the top of the blue space is open. It's only it's only like this because it is at the top of the green space. But I can't use the green space to fix that in any way, right? I don't think so. But like, I kind of have to be able to, because we, ha we have to be able to push something into the top of the blue space. There's no other way to get something into the outline that's up there. So how would I make use of this to get the blue space away from that ceiling? We can't move... Hmm. So we can't move the, the green space away from this wall under any circumstances. It is, it is definitely stuck on the wall. Well, I guess I don't, I, but I don't have to. I'm being so silly. I don't have to move a thing from this corner to the other corner. I just have to like, I just have to figure out a way of getting this, getting something pushed out. And obviously that's not exactly trivial either, but it is a way to put something into this square without having to open up the top of the blue space. So it's... It's gonna be... How are we gonna do this? If I could get the green space to be a block that exists inside the green space, then I could load the yellow block into the green space that way, and then and then it would be right here, and I could just stand here and push it out. So, how would I do that? How would I get the green block to be, the green space to be a block that exists inside of the green space? I'd have to pull it out of the blue space somehow, but I still don't know how that would be possible.
right? Like that's the, the core issue here is that I can't get the green space off of this wall. I guess if we did move the blue space away from the ceiling somehow, that would do it. So doing this gives us the maximum degree of freedom with this space. There's lots of stuff we, anything we could do with it, we can do with it from here. The question is just, how? It's easy enough to load the yellow block up into the blue block. Oh, I guess. Okay. I don't have to pull the green block, the green space into a position where it is a block inside of the green space, because I can perform that loading behavior. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can perform that loading behavior here like this. Yeah, okay. So then we push this here, and then I push the yellow box out. There we go. Uh, this one is yellow. And then over here we have blue one. We have blue ones with blue outlines. It's all very, what is, what is the color coding? What does this mean? Uh, okay, so. First of all, this is a problem, obviously. We can fix that. And then this is the only, oh, okay. The, the pink space is the only space that has uh, outlines on it, except for the space that the pink block is in right now in the yellow space. That needs to still have something in it. So hold on, let's, let's drag you up to the yellow level, but in a different position. And then we have a bunch of boxes in here that we can we can use for this purpose. So it's fairly easy. Clumsy, clumsy. Fairly easy to get one of these yellow blocks out. Right, if we do this thing, and then we push a yellow block. Ah, sorry. I have to preload this, which we absolutely can do. Because again, corners, I gotta remember how corners work. Okay. So now we have to get this. I actually want this back down in the green space because this peg here is gonna be really useful. Put this here. This allows us to load that in. Then we can get this. There we go. Because we're going to need the peg to hold the pink spot in place here. Okay. Ch challenge indeed. <laughs> it's actually. It's fairly, it's a fairly complicated idea, the thing that just happened there. But like, I'm getting the feel for, for this area. So, I'm assuming based on everything else that's happened in this world to this point, I guess I don't need, hold on. I don't need to assume anything in particular here. We are going to have to load the blue space into this over here so that it can be carried yeah so that we can carry it into here wait I need to I need to push this up further The thing is, I have to be able to get past it, right? I have to be able to get out downward past it. So actually, I think I pushed it up too high. We need it to be in a position where it can emit us into this space, and then we can leave this space through the bottom. Uh, so push this all the way to the wall, and then do that. To push this all the way up to the top. And then... 
go in here and we push this up a little bit more because now we have to be able to get above it so that we can push it down. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> that's a cruel way to do this, but fine. Um, all right. How do I? This is very distracting. So we're going to need to probably emit the yellow block to the right to get that upper. Oh, OK, that disorienting. Yeah, so we do like this to get below the space. Then we do like this to get to the right of the space. Now we've got it available to be pushed in whatever direction we like. We take it to here. Oh, hold on. I need to, when it's in the available to be pushed around state, it does need to be fed this yellow block. We have to, we have to practice a loading behavior here. This is actually, I apologize if this is like disorienting to anyone, but this is actually really, it's a really nice visualization of the way the space actually works that I'm finding is making it a little bit easier for me to comprehend the puzzle, honestly. That's really cool. That's a really, really cool level. And of course, it's important to remember Omnidirectional. Well, bi bi-directional, I guess. It's all, it's all of the directions that exist on this axis is the thing. So it's kind of omnidirectional. Uh, so... We gotta load this into here. I'm trying to figure out where the breakage is here, because, like, this seems really simple. Yeah, I don't know. Then I need to be able to get out of this space here, which I can do. Oh, uh, this is, it's a little, it's a little tricky. I should have moved the blue space into the center of this one. But that's very fixable. Just because of the, the directions we need to be able to push from. Yeah, this should be centered. Then we move you down to here. Then we get out of this space to put us in here. We push you over to fill one of the spots. Then get out here to push this out to fill the other spot and actually do a good job of it and leave it where it's supposed to be. I'm having a really hard time verbalizing what I'm going to do before I do it. I, that's the hardest part of this is not the puzzle solving, but like the feeling like I'm doing my job while while solving the puzzles. It's really interesting that you only have to solve one puzzle in this area to open up the next area. That's very strange. Well, this is funny. So we're going to have to use the blue to satisfy one of these boxes. And the other box has to be satisfied by the green block itself. So we have to, we have to make this space less recursive to solve the puzzle. There you go, just mashing reality down to a more tolerable size. I don't have a long-term plan here. I'm just like assuming based on what we've done so far. We're gonna need this in a position where we can move it around. And then, okay, y'all, it does give me a little bit of a, I don't know that I could explain to you what I just did. But that's it, right? That's the puzzle. And then we have to put this up here and then move this around and have the green box emit it there. So I just, I, I took a box out of the box 
that it was in... <clears throat> there was a box and it had another box inside of it. And I took the bigger box out of the smaller box because recursive space makes that not... The, that's, the thing is, that's not confusing. That's a good and normal thing to be able to do. All right, so since the green space is the, is the one that has an aperture on the bottom, we're going to have to emit the yellow block from the green space. We're gonna have to get the green space inside of itself, and then we're gonna have to emit something, I'm assuming the yellow block, out of the bottom of it into the outline that is inside of the green space. That's the only way we can fill that particular spot. So, with that being our goal, Let's do the sort of the naive implementation here, which has us just going in here. Wait, I was going to push the green box out. I was going to climb inside the blue space and push the green box out. But that's the situation we're in now. If I do that, we're going to have the same number of green spaces at each level. I need to create the the initial state of the recursion by putting the blue space inside of the green space. Because otherwise, as things stand right now, pushing a green space out of the blue space into another blue space is plus one minus one in terms of green spaces. That's the same number of spaces. We have to do this, make the green space more directly self-recursive. There's no longer a level of indirection on the recursion. And then also I think we want this block. I don't know, it, it, I guess, no, no, no. This block has to stay here because the blue, wait. I was gonna emit the, I was gonna put the blue space into the outline that's in the green space, but wait a second. That doesn't work because we need to still have two blocks aside from ourselves in the blue space. So those blocks are gonna, okay. Let me, let me make it the, let me make it the yellow block. I'm gonna shove this out here. We're going to go ahead and emit this. Okay. That's the simple non-recursive element. Now, if I put this back in here and then draw the blue space out of it, now we have a green space and a blue space in the blue space. Ooh, except that's a problem. But I'm not going to be able to get myself into the green space in any other location. Hmm. Problem, problem, problem. Well, what if I... Sorry, we can move this and then I can climb out into it. Yeah, there we go. It's not a problem, it just requires a little bit of reconfiguring of space. Um, okay. I'm good. Is everybody else good? Is everybody having a good time? Please type in the comments if you are having a good time. Um, okay. So green space needs four total objects which is the number of total objects we have. So the green space has to contain itself for this to be solvable. That's just true. Which means we gotta drag the blue space into the green space and then have the blue space emit the green space. That didn't seem so complicated. That seems like pretty doable and more, more to the point comprehensible. Okay, so. We have you emit green space. Wait, this is a problem. I'm not gonna be able to move the 
yellow block. How do I solve this? Here's how we solve this. The yellow block's got to get in there first. Loading behaviors, right? And then... Sorry, and then we push this down out into itself. And then... That still doesn't solve the problem. That we just have the yellow block in a different spot that is bad for it to be in. So maybe the plan is, instead of... Let me just shove in here so I can talk. Um, instead of having the blue space here and emitting things, move the yellow block to here first, then have the blue space here, and have it emit the green space. Mm, problematic, though, because then I can't get out of the blue space. Have the blue space here, and have it emit the green space. And no, it's still... I would still need to move the green space over... When we, in order for us to come out of the blue space, when it no longer contains the green space, there has to be a, a block below us that's free. So, doesn't that mean that the way I did it is necessarily the way it must go? Hmm. So, we can put the blue. We can put the blue block in a lot of different places inside of the green space. But ultimately, we have to be able to crawl out of it after the green space is no longer inside of the blue space. I am developing a small headache. I mean, it's, it's probably not entirely the video game. So... It is the case that the only way to do this is blue space into green space, then green space out of blue space, right? I think that's correct. And it's just a matter of figuring out how we're gonna get this yellow block to where it needs to go while we're working out this process. There we, that's it, right? And now I can push the green out of here and down one more. There we go. That was, that was the appropriate timing for dealing with the yellow block. Because it had to be while we still had access to travel in both directions in the space. Okay. So once again, everything's got to be inside green. What is the right way to do this? It's worth noting that the yellow space has an uneven floor, which allows us to do some to do some stuff with tucking things into purple and then still being able to move purple. So is it the case that we want to jam everything into the yellow space first? And use that as the spot where we get everything into purple? Because we can put it here and then... I don't know if it matters what order we do this stuff in here. Let's... So, okay. Now we've created this situation. Now that we've done that, we can have the yellow... The yellow space, which is inside the blue space, emit the purple space. I am so clumsy. 
right? That's useful-ish. Wait, sorry, I don't want to do this. I don't want to push anything against a wall if I don't absolutely have to. But at some point I do start absolutely having to. Ah, yeah, but anything that's against a wall becomes irretrievable for its placement within the green space. So, like, I can't go back into blue now. So that's a problem. I need to be more careful about that. Okay. So blue can't be this close to the wall. Blue could be here. That'll make it a lot easier to safely push things out of it. There we go. But I still, I don't really, I don't like really have a plan. Um, okay. This is the phase where we push everything into green now, right? And then once we're in green, emitting green from purple puts green inside green. This is good. So we... S shit. Purple needs to be inside yellow when we do this. Because otherwise we can't get things back out. So I need to make green the top level container for everything. We kind of have to wind the puzzle backwards. That's what I'm going to do here. Until purple's back inside yellow. Okay. So with purple back inside yellow, we have to go and retrieve green. So the container, green needs to be the top level container. The thing that's on the second level down needs to be the thing that directly contains the green space. Can you hear my brain turning to mush? It's like, it's like, it feels like pudding. Which means that we have to... What I might have to do is draw myself a diagram here. <laughs> so I'm having a hard time keeping it all straight in my head. Okay, so yellow is really important because yellow is the only, the yellow level is the only level at which we can freely move things into and out of the spaces without condemning them to being eternally trapped on a wall. So maybe that's yellow's got to be the top level. So actually, let's pull the blue space out into the yellow space. And then at this point... No, 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 sorry, sorry, sorry. What we have to do is pull the yellow space out of the blue space, right? We would have to push yellow out into itself to make it the top container. And then we would have to... I don't generally have any desire to have a, web a webcam on, but for this, I sort of wish you could see the hand motions <laughs> that I am making as I am trying to trying to conceptualize this in my brain. So right now we have a loop. From blue to blue is a loop. Everything else exists once in the loop. Blue exists twice, and that's why it's the thing that... I mean, it sort of exists twice. The, spa the space is a ring. So, okay. I think I'm going to call it here, honestly. 
I apologize. These episodes are going to be a variable length, it turns out. Um, I need to reset my brain a little bit. I just like hold the power button down for five seconds and then come back. This puzzle's not that complicated, but it is um, it is complex and I've just I've just wound myself fully into a knot. So I'm gonna draw myself a diagram. I'm gonna make a proper explanation for this. And when you come back next time tomorrow, I'm just gonna I'm gonna calmly explain to you how this puzzle works and we're gonna and we're gonna do it or un undo it I guess because it's sort of a knot already but we're gonna undo it and then we're just gonna move on calmly and easily from there thank you all so much for watching and we'll see you tomorrow <laughs>